Welcome back to Trending. Here to talk about sex and relationships is sexologist Dr. Lee Moore Blockman. Hi, Lee Moore. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. Thank Such you. interesting topics for Isn't today. Let's, let's just dive right in. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Fascinating completely. So we're going to talk about uh, different forms of relationships. Yeah. But I want to go into, as you said, dive in into the study because a thousand Americans were asked uh, th this question, on a scale of zero to six, if you could uh, tell what kind of relationship would you like when zero is completely monogamous and six is completely open, what would you choose? Mm -hmm. The results were astonishing. 50% of men said that they want to be consensual in a consensual non-monogamous relationship uh -huh. and 33% of women. Really? I'm going to go into the definitions of what does it mean to be in a consensual non-monogamous relationship. The what I want to give you a few other figures. So approximately 8% of both genders said that they would like to be in a completely open relationship but then when they were asked about their partners mm. they started bringing in the restrictions, there's a term for it, they want to be monogamish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what it is, yes. <laughs> that's um, funny. Gender, age and orientation uh, really um, kind of influenced this. Mm -hmm. So of course men were more uh, prone to be non-monogamous, mm -hmm. Uh, people that are younger than 30 and people that are fluid. Do you remember that we described who is fluid? If you're not heterosexual or homosexual, right. just in between. Just like an open sexuality. An open, mm -hmm. yes. Someone who's pansexual, bisexual, all of the above, had more chances of, be, uh, of being non-monogamous. Democrats <laughs> were more <laughs> non-monogamous than Republican. Well, I guess so no uh, we're talking wife about millennia. Uh, traditional norms. Yes, okay, I guess yes, that makes some sense. Yes. <laughs> is that in practice, whereas, as I said, 50% and 33, 50% of men and 33% of women were interested in practicing non-monogamy, actually only 34% of men and 24% of women actually practiced it. Okay, so, so, it's so some very, were just talking about their desires yes. and some were talking about what they were, were actually taking part right, in. Right, right, if they were actually taking action. And I want to just put it into uh, definition so people will understand. So monogamy, you know, from Latin mono is one, gamos is marriage, so monogamy is married to one. Mm -hmm. Then we have poly polyamory, which is a term that is fairly new and that applies to uh, love with someone else, more than one partner, mm -hmm. because uh, amor is, is love and this is based actually on a relationship that it involves love, not necessarily sex, which brings me to the next one, which is swinging. Everybody knows. Yeah. Swinging is based on sex. Then we have polygamy that involves a few uh, spouses to each one. And then we have, of course, consensual non-monogamy is actually the umbrella above all of these. So I'm asking you actually, and I'm asking everybody, is monogamy dead or why is it, why is it even there? Why did it emerge? Mm -hmm. So really, if you look historically, approximately 80% of societies were always polygamous right. and of the ones that were actually um, that were actually non non uh, non -monog they were actually monogamous it all it all emerged from uh, the industrial revolution that actually created the need to shift from the model of sharing because mm -hmm. before before 8000 BC everybody was sharing shelter uh, security food mm -hmm. and sexuality once these things changed Men was in charge of his own property, in charge of his own land, and of female sexuality. All of a sudden, he needed to make sure that the offspring that he's taking care of or sharing the land with is his own. Okay. That he's not gonna, you know. So the question is really, who does it apply to? Who needs to live under what circumstances? And I want to start and say that this is a mutual decision to make. Right. It's much more difficult to actually bring this into a relationship that is already based on monogamy or something that is different on the other side of the scale. The best thing to do is really to go into a relationship where both of you came from a background, for instance, two people that are non-monogamous, going into a relationship that is non-monogamous, mm -hmm. that will work well. I want to warn people about the idea of swinging as a therapist. I want to say to people that sometimes you cannot unsee what you've seen. Mm -hmm. And the things that you engage in, if you open the door to it, it really is a responsibility. But overall, try not to make an assumption and try not to fall into the trap of what society dictates to us. Right, right. Just go with what feels right. And, and actually, what, um, yeah, you can experiment, but really mm -hmm. make sure that you take responsibility for everything because if you decide to go and embark on something, there are consequences. Okay, Limor, thank <laughs> you so much uh, for this today. Thank you. That was you. great.